this is a book that looks at Turkey's economic rise in the last decade. Uh, Turkey has undergone a dramatic transformation, uh, mostly under the rule of the Justice and Development Party, AKP government, which has ran the country since 2002. Uh, thanks to sound economic policies and also benefiting from overall global growth, at least in the last decade, Turkey has grown in leaps and bounds. It's the first time a, a large Muslim-majority society becomes majority middle class in history. That's important. That's a success story that ought to be told, which has also filled the Turks with a self of confidence, both at the, in domestic politics but also in international politics, driving the country's attention away from its earlier European preoccupation to a more global focus, uh, one that also includes uh, the Middle East. What Turkey did in the economic sphere is the following. Turkey basically maintained its connections to Western institutions, European and American capital, but it opened its economy up to markets in the Middle East, uh, Central Asia, and Africa. So it benefited from growth while taking advantage of capital coming from uh, the West. That is the formula of Turkey's economic success. I call it the uh, yin and yang of Turkey's rise. If the country now can do this in foreign policy, it can continue to rise leveraging its Western connections, such as its membership to NATO, its, its prospective membership into the European Union, its good ties with the United States, uh, building its ties with Israel, at the same time as reaching out to the Middle East and becoming a player in that region. Turkey not only should act like a Muslim power, but also should be a Muslim power with deep connections to the Western world. For the first time in its modern history, Turkey has pursued a policy of regime change in a neighboring country. And unfortunately for Turkey, that policy has so far not delivered results. Part of that is because the international community has not been steadfast in its commitment to the rebels. But a big part of it is because Turkey has tried to punch above its weight, perhaps. Turkey finds itself sorely lacking the hard power uh, which is needed for any country that wants to be a regional force in the Middle East. And that partly explains Turkey's pivot to the United States since the beginning of the Syrian uprising. It realizes that the hard power and the firepower that the U.S. has are assets that Turkey does not have. And these are assets that Turkey needs right now to contain the crisis in Syria and to make sure that the instability from Syria does not spill it into Turkey and tarnish the country's very hard-earned hard image of a stable nation in an unstable region. The recent protests in Turkey, the Gezi protests, in which the government cracked down violently on on millions of liberal demonstrators who took to the streets in May and June 2013. That set of events sparked a new debate in Washington on Turkey's direction. And I think that really hurt Turkey's image as a rising nation because despite its economic success, it looked like Turkey is still work in progress when it comes to a domestic politics, especially the government's ability to handle dissent. And the recent developments suggest that the uh, court's independence is f under further threat uh, separation of powers is now an issue. There is an opportunity here for the Turks. Turkey is a fascinating place because it has these disparate halves, uh, op opposing political blocks. You have uh, probably equally sized blocks of, let's say, conservatives and liberals, Islamists and secularists, Kurdish nationalists and Turkish nationalists, social liberals and social conservatives. This country is too large for one faction, party, or ideology to control it. All these different views have to coexist together. There is a chance for Turkey to do that now. The country is debating writing its first constitution ever that is made by entirely by civilians. If that constitution was a liberal charter that would allow these disparate elements of the society to coexist, I think that would really be the rise of Turkey. In the run-up to the uh, elections of 2014, I think AKP leader and Turkish Prime Minister Erdogan is interested more in polarizing uh, than reaching across the aisle. He knows uh, that Turkey is a majority uh, a conservative uh, society where most people vote on the political right. And his dream is to consolidate the entire spectrum of the political right under his party. If you look at the poll results now, it does not look as if the forthcoming nationwide uh, uh, local elections will be competitive. Uh, the gap between the AKP and the main opposition party is in double digits. It's unlikely that the opposition is going to narrow that gap in a matter of a few months. The race to watch on March 29th is going to be the race for Istanbul, and that race is going to be determined uh, in a two-way competition between the Governing Justice and Development Party, AKP, and the main opposition, Secular Leftist Republican People's Party, CHP. Controlling Istanbul is uh, the key to controlling Turkey. Erdogan's rise to prominence in Turkey 
started when he became Istanbul's mayor in 1994. And if he lost Istanbul now, that would be a psychological defeat for him. But also, economically, it would be the beginning of the rise of an opposition.